Hi there, today we're going to be cooking roast capsicum and tomato soup and we're going to serve that with a little toasted baguette with some parmesan cheese on it. First thing I'm going to do for this soup is I'm going to actually get my tomatoes peeled and de-seeded and the reason for that is because uh, one, it's a, a really good skill for you to learn how to do and two, it gets that tomato peel out of our soup. Sometimes that's quite an unpleasant thing. Tomatoes, if you imagine, uh, are waterproof. When it rains on them, the rain doesn't go through, so that means that that skin is actually pretty tough. Although you think of a tomato as a squashy thing, the skin on them is really tough, so I want to take that off. So the first thing to do is put a little cross in the top of the tomato, and then I'm just going to put my thumb and the knife in the base, turn that around and take the core at the bottom out of the tomato. I'm going to do that the same on the second one. So I'm going to put my little cross in the top there, my thumb in the base, and take out the core so that there's no core in the bottom and there's a cross on the top. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pop those into some boiling water for about 30 seconds. Now, I'm going to watch them while they're in there to see when the skin starts to loosen. And as soon as they it does, I'm going to plunge them then into some ice water to stop the cooking process because we don't want the tomatoes to cook yet. And also that ice water will shock the skin into coming off. So we'll see how that goes. So very carefully, both tomatoes into the boiling water. Watching those in there to see when that skin starts to peel away. underneath the skin is still nice and firm so that's not starting to cook and that's why we wanted it to go into that ice water because we want the tomato to actually cook in the soup and put its flavour into the soup but I just don't want that skin in the soup. Okay so that's the first one. That's the second one. Let's speed this one up a little bit. Second one of those tomatoes. And now I'm going to de seed them. So if I de seeding, what I mean is I want to cut them into quarters and also take out the seeds because the seeds aren't going to add anything to this soup at all. In fact, when they puree inside the soup, if I leave them in, There'll be little bits and little hard bits of seeds. So I just want to take those seeds out. And I just do that by just cutting up the top and then taking out the seeds with my thumb. And this process of removing the skins from the tomatoes is a fairly common one in kitchens. We, we quite often just use the flesh of the tomato this can all go into our stock pot to make our stock, so that's all great. We can use that, it doesn't have to be wasted. But we want to, for something like this, we want to just make sure that we've just got our tomato flesh rather than the skin and the hips. Okay. It also is quite useful in salads. The French use it in quite a number of salads. And 
what I'm going to do with it now by chopping it up with no skin and no flesh is called a concasse. So it's a fairly common French trick to get rid of the parts of the tomato that can be a bit of a nuisance when you cook. Okay, so to finish this concasse off, I'm just going to dice up that tomato. And remember, it's going into a soup, so in this instance, it doesn't really matter too much about getting it exact. If I was using that concasse to maybe garnish a salad, a salad nichoise, something like that, then I'd want to make sure that it was all the same size. But as this is going into a soup, I can be fairly industrial with it and just give it a rough chop over. So the next part of my soup after this is going to be the capsicum. So I'm going to get the capsicum out now. Put my tomatoes on one side. So that's my concasse of tomato there. So that's a chopped tomato that's been peeled and de -seeded. So the next thing then is the capsicum. So I've actually roasted this capsicum in advance and by roasting it in advance I've allowed the skin to, to soften away from the flesh. So very similar to what I did with the, um, with the tomato, I'm taking away the seeds and I want to take away the skin from the outside. So if I lay that capsicum down, you can see that I've roasted it quite hard and blistered it and now the skin will just peel off that. Now the skin of the capsicum just like the tomato is really hard and it doesn't lend itself to making a great soup because it doesn't puree down very well. So I'm taking as much of that skin off as I can possibly get without losing too much flesh. And then similarly, I'm just going to move away any of these seeds. Now if the odd one gets left in there, it should get caught by the sieve at the end. So I'm not going to be too pedantic about getting every single seed. I'm getting as many of them as I can without losing any, uh, without losing any flesh of the capsicum. So I'm going to use about a half of my capsicum here, so I'm just going to put that other half to one side. And I've also got the juice from the capsicum, so I'm going to keep that and use that as well, because that's a really great flavour there. So I just want to now dice up again the actual capsicum itself just, just fairly roughly and I'm going to pop that in with the juice that came off the capsicum. Okay, just the last bit of prep there for this now we need a little bit of onion so it's probably only about a quarter of an onion just going to remove the skin and the tip from the onion and then roughly chop that onion. Again it's going to go through the food processor so it doesn't matter if there's a few lumps in it. But still using that core grip and still making sure that we've got the all the safety things in processor. Okay, so that's my mise en place now. I've got some herbs. I've also made some little fruits to go on top of it. I'll show you those in a moment. The first thing to do is now put the soup on. So I'm going to use a fairly medium to large pan for that, and I'm going to get that nice and hot first. And then I'm going to add my olive oil to that. So. So we want about 20 mils of olive oil going into that. And we can use, if we want, 
just a little bit of garlic as well, so I just put just a clove of garlic in there. And again, it's going through the food processor, so it doesn't matter whether it's a little bit larger than normal. Okay, so the oil now has got to a reasonable temperature. I can pop my onions and garlic into that. starting to cook out, I can add the main flavours of my soup. So the first one is those tomatoes, cook those out in there now. Remembering that the capsicum has already been roasted, so because the capsicum has already been roasted, it won't take quite as long to cook out. Rolling the heat up and down on there. If it looks like it needs a little bit more heat, a little bit more. Not going to that. I just want to put those tomatoes out just for another minute or two. While that's happening, I'll show you the croutons. Okay, so these are the little croutons that we're going to serve on the top of the soup, and I'm going to show you how to make those in a moment. Next step on this is to get our capsicum in. So that's our roast capsicum, and I've kept the juices from the capsicum and put that in there as well. That's about half the capsicum that I've got in there. I'm just going to cook that down again. Okay, so for my croutes, all I've used is a little par-baked French baguette. So you can either get these at the supermarket, there is a recipe for baguettes on our YouTube channel that you can watch that's uh, the same as the naan bread recipe, and you just make that into a baguette shape and let it rise and half-bake it. So I'm just going to cut a few slices off here, and you'll see that that's about the thickness that we want. So we want just a few of those slices, and on the top of them then, we're just going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and just toast those up in the oven for just a few minutes at a time. So they go, they go into the oven for about five or six minutes. Okay, at this stage we can start to thicken our soup. Now for the soup, we're going to use a flour thickener. There are a number of different ways to thicken soups. One is the main ingredient, which was the pumpkin soup that you saw a little earlier when we did the pumpkin soup. So that's thickened by using the main ingredient, and in that case, pumpkin. Now this one, the tomatoes and the capsicum don't have any starch in them. So they're not really going to thicken that soup on its own. So I'm going to use just a little bit of flour in there. I don't want to put too much because I don't want the soup to taste floury. So I'm just going to use a little bit of flour in there. So it's only a tablespoon. And then I'm going to use about the same amount of tomato paste. So about a tablespoon of tomato paste. So that's making a roux inside the, inside the soup. So it's thinning up by the starch from the flour, I think anything. So the different types of thickening that we've got are the flour thickened soup, like this one, the one that's thickened by its own ingredients, so that's like pumpkin soup, and then finally we have soups that aren't thickened at all, and they're like consommes and broths and things like that. 
So the, the different styles of soup, um, yeah, we can also thicken soup with things like pasta. So minestrone soup has pasta in it. The starch from the pasta thickens that soup up. Okay, so now I've cooked out my flour, I can start adding the stock to it. Now in this one I've used vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock at home, that's fine. But I've decided to use vegetable stock, which means that then I can serve it to my vegetarians because there's no meat products in it. So I'm just going to turn that back up again a fraction, and I'm just adding that stock slowly. So I've got 400 mils of stock there. This recipe is in the book on page 14. If you want to have a look in the recipe book that I sent you all home. So just very slowly adding that stock, just a little at a time. Really the longer this cooks out for, the better. Yeah, this, this video I'm going to keep fairly short, so I'm not going to cook it out for a long time. But you could cook this one out very slowly on a long slow heat for maybe about an hour. We're just going to do it very quickly today. When you do it in class, it will probably have the best part of the day, about 30 to 40 minutes to cook in class. So that four